we were just singing a song. All right, you guys, welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce. I am joined here with one of my friends, Angie Tillman, here from Georgia. Today, I was what's is today the is today June one or is it May thirtieth? May thirty first. Oh, May thirty first. Mm -hmm. 2023 god this year is going by so quickly my youngest niece just turned two happy birthday may may um i know may may she's so chubby and she's so cute i just freaking she can give the best side eye out of any you know she's two so she's like what the why am i, why am I back here <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> um but anyway, guys, this is a very important video we're going to or episode we're going to do. And I'm hoping that this is going to be an ongoing conversation because we have been talking about organic portals. We have been talking about, you know, what's a sold person? Who's a person who has a soul? We're getting close to the timeline jump into fourth density positive. So we're starting to see the darkness can't really hide anymore. Um, and so we're starting to see a lot of people's behaviors really on the forefront that that we weren't probably able to see before because it's getting so we're getting so close to that making that jump um and so but before we go any further i do let's just go ahead and do our, a quick word from one of our sponsors asia thank you so much asia and then we will get right back into the subject at hand you guys know that I love a good workout. I love to sweat every single day. I work out about six days a week, at least two hours on my yoga mat, doing Ashtanga yoga or doing a bar class. When one works out, their muscles break down. I, I tell my students here in Atlanta, I've been sore for about 17 years. And as we start to age, we start to uh, have a harder time repairing those broken down muscles. Now, a few months ago, my my friend Catherine Edwards introduced me to the product ASEA. I had been offered sponsorships before, but I had always turned them down because the integrity of the company didn't align with my own integrity. But the more I studied about ASEA, the more I studied about the owners, the person who came up with the formula for ASEA, the more I liked this company. And then I started to try the product. So what is ASEA? Again, when you work out, when you rip your muscles apart, there has to be a rebuilding system. System. When that rebuild happens, that is when your body technically gets stronger. We have in our body something called redox. Redox is this thing that helps, it's a signaling system between your cells. Now, when we are young, when we're kids, before we hit puberty, we have a lot of redox. That's why children are young and healthy and they can fall out of trees and skin their knees and be fine and recover quickly. But as we get older, that redox becomes less and less and less. So it doesn't really matter how healthy the cells are and the cells cannot properly communicate with each other. This means that as we get older, we start to feel more body aches. We start to get wrinkles. We start to get saggy skin. We start to get gray hair. For men, this means that the hair starts to thin and fall out. Again, it's like having a cell phone. What's the good in having an iPhone, like my iPhone, if there's no cell system to work it? The ASEA is the cellular system. Now again, I'm a pretty healthy person. I work really hard on my health, so I wasn't expecting a huge difference with the redox. However, the benefits that I've experienced over these last two months of being on ASEA have been unbelievable. I feel younger, I'm sleeping better, I feel like my quality of life is better. Even my hair, I've always had really thick hair, but now my hair is like gotten doubly thick and it's growing like crazy. I literally just got my hair cut like two weeks ago and I am about to have to make another appointment to get it cut again because it is unbelievable how fast my hair is growing since taking this redox system. My nails are growing faster. Even my boyfriend, my boyfriend who is in his early 50s is starting to thin out at the top of the hair as what, what happens to men. And even he is starting to notice his hair grow back, which is common. If you look at the uh, the stories from ASEA, so many men have grown their hair back simply by adding redox back into their body. There are countless stories of people who have lowered their blood pressure, gotten off medications, cut their medications in half because their body is being supplied with the cellular system it needs to do what the body is supposed to do and that is heal itself. Now basically what you do is when you get your redox in, you can hear it's a liquid. It's a liquid. 
This comes with a little shot glass, a two, a two ounce shot glass. Most people will take between four and eight ounces of Asiya a day. I take eight ounces a day because I'm obsessed with this product. So you pour two ounces into the shot glass, you swish it around your mouth for 30 to 60 seconds, and then you swallow, that's it. You can't overdose with this product. If you take too much, your body will just pee it out. Now, when you take the liquid, you're allowing the intelligence of your body to take the redox where the body needs the redox to go. I've told you guys before I struggle heavily with it, with arthritis. And in the past I have taken medications for my arthritis, but I do know that arthritis is caused by overthought. It's caused by anxiety. However, medication coming from my doctor only dealt with the issue of the arthritis, not the cause. Well, when I started taking the ASEA about 3 days into taking this, I noticed that I was a lot calmer. My anxiety had dissipated and I thought how interesting is that? How interesting is that my body knew that the source of the issue with my joints was coming from my own mind so where did it send the redox to my mind there's also a topical gel that I really like. So when you take the liquid, again, you're allowing your body its own intelligence to take the redox where it is needed to help heal the body. But with the topical gel, you are able to put the gel where you want it put. I have been putting this on my legs for a while now. It has helped so much with the tightening of the skin, with cellulite, with varicose veins. It's also helped with the soreness of my legs. My legs get real sore from working out. I've been actually even putting this on my boobs you guys now again I'm 40 I've never had children so my boobs don't drop that much but I've been kind of putting it on my boobs too and I tell you my boyfriend really likes that so so this is a really awesome product but despite the, the vanity if you have a sore leg or a sore knee or a sore neck you can put this on and direct the redox into the area that is in pain or inflamed and the redox will help with that so I even use this when I'm on my period when I get my I take some of the redox and I put it topically over the area where my uterus is and it it helps my boyfriend again has been putting the gel in his hair which is helping his hair grow back right now currently if anybody knows my boyfriend he is covered in tattoos he has been getting tattoos since he was in his 20 and he right now currently is getting one of his tattoos touched up and so when he comes home tonight we're gonna experiment with the gel to see if the gel heals the wound of the tattoo even faster. Now, we want everybody, I want everybody to have the best quality of life that you can have. What's the point in being a human being if you're too sick or too off balance to be able to actually enjoy your life, to be actually to be able to actually work out and have fun or to go bike riding with your children or get down and play dolls with your grandchildren. This ASEA is going to help you and help your body achieve the life that you were meant to live in happiness and peace and health and in harmony. If you would like more information on ASEA, then please text Bryce Info to 321-216-8047. Again, that's Bryce Info to 321-216-8047. If you're texting from another country please make sure you put plus one three two one two one six eighty forty seven and somebody will get back to you pretty quickly they can you can ask any questions you like of the product you can find out more information about the redox system the person on the other end of the line will walk you through every option available to you at this moment they can even try to help you get the products at wholesale prices so again knowledge is power knowledge protects and knowledge is infinite as i say all the time on this channel if you want more information please Please text Bryce Info to 321-216-8047. All right, you guys. So I was this morning, I was doing my light therapy. I do light therapy from time to time. And I was playing around with some of those YouTube shorts. Now, I have been a victim many times of narcissistic abuse, as has Angie. Um, I've been very honest and open about my past with trauma therapy. It used to be that I had the propensity of um, dating narcissists, but after going through trauma therapy, that stopped, but they're still in my lives. And I'm st I still continue for the 40 years of my life, getting myself into this, this cycle of um, getting involved with narcissists. And I, as friends, business deals, all that kind of stuff. And I've been really thinking like, what is it about me 
that keeps attracting these narcissists. Now we know that empaths do attract narcissists and I'm an empath, so is Angie. Angie, we've talked off camera. We, we've both dealt with narcissistic abuse, narcissistic smear campaigns, all that kind of stuff. But you know, there there is one verse in the Bible that I really like, and it's "Ask and you shall receive; seek and you shall find; knock, and the door shall be opened unto you." And I was watching these shorts, and I had been asking and, and meditating on this question, like, "What about me needs to be healed so I stop attracting these narcissists?" And lo and behold, because God has a sense of humor, there was a little clip that popped up on my my reels from Teal Swan. <laughs> I know. Now, I'm not a huge fan of Teal Swan. I think she's a cult leader. That's my opinion. But you can't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Obviously, these cult leaders are speaking some sort of truth or else they wouldn't be able to be cult leaders, right? So I'm going to try to play for you. I sent it to Angie this morning because all of a sudden when I heard what she was saying, it hit me like a ton of bricks i was like oh my god she's right and then we'll explain deeper my realization and angie's realizations but i'm going to try to play this you guys for people who have a hard time with these boundaries and for people who call themselves empaths it's actually the same childhood experience it's that in childhood you've got an unpredictable adult and that unpredictable adult whether you're consciously aware of it or not presents enough of a risk to you that you have to be hyper attuned because every move they make or don't make has some implication for yourself. So what a lot of people don't like learning about empaths is that because of this traumatic type of a childhood experience, they learn how to pay hyper attention and hyper attuned to anything in the room that is not okay. That's why you're never going to meet somebody who's got this thing going. Who's like, you know, I just love being around people because I feel amazing. Because they're going to walk in the room and instead of attuning to the person who's happy, they're going to attune to the person who's got the issue. Because that's where the risk is. In case you want to know why empaths always feel like crap. That's why. For people who have a hard time with these bounds. Did you guys hear that? I hope that came through through the microphone. I'm terrible at technology, so I don't know how to share the whole clip. But basically what she said, and when she said, I listened to it like 10 times in a row because I was like, holy shit. Holy fucking shit like th this is exactly what my issue is let me explain it guys so she's saying that when you are a child now i grew up i've been very honest and if you guys hear banging that's of course the construction next door it's ugh. speaking of narcissists no um uh, uh, they're just doing their job um when i was a child i grew up in what i now know to be a narcissistic system so there are systems in play that are built off of narcissistic abuse. And so let me explain this. So I had narcissism in my family. I also went to a very high control, high demand, elitist private school that's very lineage. And the whole system was based off of narcissistic abuse. Um, it was very abusive. Uh, there's a lot of court cases against my school now that are currently playing out in present time from when I was a child there because a lot of my peers are starting to be like, oh, fuck, no, you guys abuse us as children. But it was based the headmaster, the administration. They were now as an adult. I know that they all had narcissistic personality disorder. Narcissists work well together. Um, they were enabled by everybody else. And so the abuse was just compounded 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 which, which caused me and a lot of people who grew up in that situation to have complex post-traumatic stress disorder now a narcissistic system does not necessarily have to be in a fancy private school it can be anywhere it can be it's just that the people at the top are 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 working there the lifestyle of a narcissist and you have to submit now when you're a child what i mean by you have to submit this is what teal swan was teal swan was saying when you are a child you cannot remove yourself from situations. So when we have are attuned to a, a an unpredictable adult or an unhinged as a child, it's a subconscious threat. Our nervous system goes, this person is a risk to me. They are a threat to me. The first response naturally is what fight or flight. But as a child, you can't go anywhere. You have no where, where are you going to go? So you start to placate and tune into the person, the adult who is the risk to you. So what does that mean? You're probably going to fawn. 
It's called fawning. You might, um, you know, trying to keep them happy, being a people pleaser. That's where the people pleaser, because you're trying to keep their, their uh, um, emotional disorder. You're trying to keep at bay because their emotional disorder is a risk to you as the child. You're the one that pays the penalty when they become unhinged. It's All right. Like this is a form of survival, really. It's survival. Absolutely. It's survival. And when you come from a situation like my situation in the growing up in the 80s and the 90s, I come from a very fucking powerful family, both sides. And so even in my own family life, who am I going to go to? You know, from the outside looking in, this is a prominent family. And most of my family members are amazing, awesome people. But the ones who were narcissists and were mentally and emotionally abusing me as a child, the other adults did not step in to protect me at that moment because this was something that really wasn't known. Like this type of abuse is now really coming to the, the forefront. So what Tilson was, was saying is someone like me, I learned as a child subconsciously that when there is an adult who is a risk to my safety, it is my job then to protect myself. And the only way I can protect myself as a child is to make sure that adult is happy, is always happy, even at the detriment of my own happiness, to be a people pleaser, to constantly placate. Now, when that translates into adulthood, as an adult, I have the power to walk away if I want to, but I'm stuck in that traumatic of, of post-traumatic stress disorder, that traumatic loop. So when I meet people who my gut tells me are a little unhinged or a little crazy, I perceive them subconsciously as a risk. And so instead of using my adult authority to walk away, I try to placate them. I try to calm them down, keep them happy. I, I was telling my boyfriend this morning that I have, and I, I think I've said this on the show before, I have a distinct memory. A dis, I must have been like eight, nine, ten years old, sitting in the back of my mom's car. My feet didn't touch the floor. That's how young I was. And my head came up to like here on the window. So I remember looking out the window and I had this thought. It was like I was n negotiating with myself. I remember thinking, Bryce, if you just do what people want you to do, they won't be mad at you. You won't get in trouble. I remember having, so that's what she's talking about. And so what tends to happen, especially if you're dealing with an unhinged person, um, a, a toxic person, a person with narcissistic personality disorder, a person with deranged or delusional thoughts, any type of boundary you put up with that person, a perceived boundary, anytime you, you stop placating them, you just say no, you then become attacked. And so the trauma continues. So it's just re-implementing itself in someone like my head that I have to keep people happy so that they won't hurt me. When in reality, in a healthy childhood, I would have learned from a very young age, the minute I feel like something's wrong, I just walk away before I get too invested. Right? Does that make sense? Am I making sense? You make total sense to me because it's just really hitting home. <laughs> <laughs> I know I can see it on your face. And I, I was like, Angie, I texted you early this morning because I, I was supposed to film with tomorrow this morning that got post postponed till Friday. There was a conflict. So that's coming Friday, guys. But I text Angie early after I saw that. And I was like, girl, do you want to film? Like, Because we've been talking about starting this series and doing this series. And I was like, I, this is just like mind blowing. And I told my boyfriend this morning after I played it for him, I was like, I was like, it is your job as my partner to help me because now that I'm aware of what, what it is from lo and behold, Teal Swan, <laughs> like I said, God has a sense of humor. Now that I'm aware of what this, what, where this comes from, I've been doing this for 40 years. So the habit is not going to stop overnight. So I told my boyfriend, I was like, you're going to need to help me when another person, another organic portal, another narcissist comes into my life. I need you to be the one to say, hey, walk away. Don't fawn. Just before you get invested, just walk, just cut it off, walk away. Yeah. So, yeah. So anyway, go ahead, Angie. What are your thoughts, girl? 
<laughs> well, I was picturing myself, oh, I'm getting brave, but I was picturing myself as you were saying all this about just, you know, keeping as long as, as long, you, you, you know, when you were in that car, as long as I just do what they like, as long as I just keep people happy, then I'll be okay. And I was just picturing myself early married, you know, before I started the business, I can remember everywhere I went, I was, I was Kat's mama. I was Mrs. Finn Tillman. I was, you know, the wife and the mom and the whatever. And then when I formed my own business and started getting out on social media and sharing my own <laughs> innards with the world, the attack started coming because yeah. And then I would bow down and I would quiet in myself. I do it. I do this all the time. I'll just get really quiet. I won't start. I won't share anything for a while. I haven't been sharing lately, not real stuff. I share like fun little things, but I'm not really sharing my, my heart and soul on my YouTube lately. And it's just because there's just a lot going on and I'm finding myself doing that thing again, that same loop of going, well, let me, let me put the pacifier on you know in yes in well it's hand. because you're narcissist so for for the other the other person the the unhinged individual you know narcissists don't have empathy they you know for for someone like you angie or myself i'm constantly thinking about like man i'd feel really bad if i if somebody else experienced this i would feel really bad but a narcissist doesn't they don't see you as a human being just like an organic portal you're what they call narc supply you're a drug to them. So as long as they're able to feed off of you, as long as you're doing what they want that you want them to do, despite the criticism, despite everything, um, then they're, they're actually feeding off of you. But the minute you cut that narc supply, there's a backlash. You become the, the bad guy. You become, you know, narcissists um, have the propensity to be pathological liars. Now, I say pathological because that's a mental issue. Um, it's different than just telling a white lie here or there. It's it's a it's pathological um, because this is a disorder. It's a disordered mind, and um, and that happens a lot in marriages. It happens a lot in friendships, in businesses. Um, we see it a lot on the in the Great Awakening in, in our movement. I, I offline, I think yesterday, I said, you know, I've I've seen more cruelty in the truther community than I do coming from the normies. Ac actually, there's way more cruelty. An evil in the truth or, truth or community than there is in the, with the normal people. And so what, why is that? And, and, and a lot of people, you know, I was, I was reading up about like narcissistic rage, smear campaigns, um, all that kind of stuff. The pathological lying that comes with smear campaigns, the links that people will, these narcissists will go to because they don't have governors. They don't have a soul. They are organic portals. So they don't have a limit to what they will do. You know, we all do things stupid. We all will, will say mean things to someone. But for someone who has a soul, they have there's a governor on how far they'll go, right? Um, and there's not. There's not for a narcissist. And um, we have in in the in the truther community, and this happens a lot. This goes back to the childhood. We have what they call future faking. It's called future faking. You can actually look it up. Narcissistic abuse, future faking. It's a form of gaslighting. So it can be as little as Oh, I'm so sorry I blew up at you and I smeared you and I, I demoralized you. I, I promise you I won't do it again. You know what? In the future, you're going to be given a million dollars and I'm going to praise you. And and it's to gaslight you and get you back in. How many times have we seen in the in this truther community people saying, oh, the RV is coming tomorrow or, oh, you know, this is going to happen next week. And it never does. It's been three years now and people have still double down and believe it's coming because they're being gaslit by an by a charming individual who knows how to lie because they don't have governors right on their system right. and so um and, and then the, a lot of us who are imp empaths in the community fawn over these people because subconsciously we see them as a perceived risk anyway we might not consciously be aware of it so we're trying to keep them settled so that they don't hurt us. I hope I'm, it's this, it's making, it's like a light bulb went off this morning in my head. Is this making sense? Am I being clear about the greater, the mi macro and the micro of this? Yes. And for me, I, I tend to, um, and I think we all do. We, when we enter a relationship, I will just 
tell my whole story to somebody. Same so then they have all that info to use against yep. me. Mm -hmm. Yep. They'll twist it. They mm -hmm. will twist it. I'm the same way. And and my boyfriend's actually said that to me many times, like, stop telling everybody you're, I'm like, well, I, I'm not, there's nothing, I'm not hiding anything. Like, you know, I'm an open book. And he's like, no, just, you don't, you know, let people earn that from you. Let people earn, it doesn't mean you're rude and nasty to people when you first meet them, but just let it be a slow progression. Um, and, and, um, I keep laughing when this is all over. I'm good. We're all going to need lots of therapy anyway, but you know, I'm the last one to know when someone doesn't like me <laughs> like, <laughs> way back in the past. I can remember this one particular person. It was a girl. And I, I remember like being big and pregnant and just laying on her carpet. She had the best air conditioning and carpet, you know, and I remember just going over and just like laying there and just telling her everything. And she's like been like just a terror in my life because she just knows everything and that's the thing like instead of instead of like really every time I would talk to her I don't talk to her anymore but she would bring up those things that really were really hard for me in my life that I'd shared with her well how is so and so how is your brother how is you know is he in jail again oh you know well how are you you know I'm like it was always those things that were the the hardest for me to deal with that um she would always bring up never like hey what have you been up to lately what you've been doing you know or yeah. what it was always just um picking pick like digging at you uh -huh. let you know you're not like okay you're really not okay right right and i'm better than you and uh -huh. well and even with a narcissist it's it's literally and and you know I, my therapist had said this to my boyfriend reminds me of this when you're a healthy minded person and just having like I have CPTSD, I'm sure Angie, you probably have CPTSD too. Just because you have an anxiety disorder, you're still healthy minded. You're still logical minded. And you know, my boyfriends and my therapist are both like you, you can't as a, as a healthy minded person, you will never understand the workings of a toxic mind. The fact that they, the links that they will go to, to try to hurt you like that. And, um, and sometimes it can be a perceived, so a narcissistic injury. So the minute that you pull your narc supply away, be it with a romantic partner, a business partner, a friend, the minute you pull that, that fawning away, that narcissist, you put that boundary up, they see you as attacking them because you took away their narc supply. And I know that's crazy because well, I say it's crazy. When I first started therapy, I didn't even know what a damn boundary was. I was like, what's a boundary? Like, no one taught me boundaries as a child. No one. And looking back at my childhood, my the adults in my life who were, I would say, sold people like me who were S-O-U-L-E-D, had a soul, they were dealing with the same issues I was dealing with as a child, too, they just didn't have the resources to understand that this is a personality disorder and you can't fix it. And the best thing you can do is walk away. So they were in their own flight or fl fight or flight response. So to try to give a child that protection was inconceivable because they were tr subconsciously through their nervous system trying to protect themselves as well. And so it's just a whole s s messed up system. And, um, yeah, so when the narcissist, when you put your foot down and you finally just say no, it can be just something simple as no, no thanks, I don't want to go with you. Or no thanks, I don't want to do that show. <laughs> they perceive you as abusing them because you had the audacity to say no to them. Or when their gaslighting stops working on you and you say no, I'm good, I, I don't believe you, I'm good, no. They, they see you then as a threat to them because you basically took their food away. Yeah. You, they're, they're, they're energetic vampires. And so they have to go on the all out attack, the all out attack on you, because how dare you not allow them to continue feeding off of you and abusing you? Yeah. I had someone last fall that was saying ugly things to me in, in a text message. And before I would have gone back and forth and tried to make this person understand me you know and yeah and for once I just said I'm going to bed now like I typed back to her I am going to bed now and I'm blocking you oh my goodness I did two weeks I just now I haven't heard from this person since but I'm like wow 
but I do feel there's a tech going on. Yeah. <laughs> and, really like, and that's, and if you guys, I will put like, there's some really great resources on YouTube, like um, Dr. Romney. I love, there's some really great, um, a lot of them focus on like romantic relationships, which is really important, but you can find someone it comes to like a bigger hole. Yeah. That you, you, when the smear campaign starts, because it will, with a narcissist, it will, that's their, that's their modus operandi. It will just buckle up. The best retaliation is silence. Yeah. Don't, don't say anything. Um, luckily enough, I feel like because we are getting so close to the jump in fourth D and they say this, you know, loved one says this, Cassiopeian say this, we're kind of the bleed through right now where, um, those of us, I think, who are ascending are starting to really see it big time. Like people, narcissists can't hide anymore the dysfunction. And it's interesting, long before, I remember taking a walk, actually with Mr. Fox, and we were talking about, uh, this is years ago, about the law of one. And Mr. Fox was saying that um, according to, I think it's the Cassiopeians, once we get to the bleed through stage, the people who are not ascending will be like basically walk, be walking around the street talking to themselves. They're going to be like the crazy people talking to themselves on the street. And I literally thought it was going to be talking to themselves on the street. But what's what's a street corner? What's a, what's a street corner for us in 2023? It's the internet. The internet. Mm -hmm. It's going to start happening. And I was like, damn, I remember that conversation. I was like, yeah, we're seeing it all over the internet of these people who are organic portals, who are narcissists, who aren't even going to go fourth density negative because they don't have their upper chakras anyway. So they're just going to have to go back to third density planet. They're talking to themselves. One of them even says, like, there's this person that we mutually kind of know online. Um, we'll, we'll do these voice messages and she'll say, this is, you know, and she'll name her name and she'll go to the internet. Yeah. <laughs> she says she's talking to the internet. Like, it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, it's, it's that shit. And for, so for, the, for those of us that are ascending... Now, a year or two ago, people might have believed it because things were a little bit more hazy. There was more of a fog. And the fog is actually, a, the therapy uses this as the fear, obligation, guilt. So that's what narcissists put you in. They put you in the fog, the fear, the obligation, and the guilt. They make you feel bad. They make you feel obligated. They make you fear them. Again, that goes back to what Till Swan, Till Swan was saying, that fawning to make sure that perceived risk in your life stays even keel. They become your top priority. She said, even as an adult, I thought that was powerful. When you walk into a, a party full of people, as somebody that experiences a child, you will be zoomed in on the one person who's in a bad mood because you're so used to that being the situation you had as a child, whereas a person who grew up in a healthy childhood wouldn't even give that person in a bad mood the time of day. They'd be fixated on the people having fun and laughing, you know, but we're so, we're so aware of our surroundings when it comes to human beings. And for me again, so all the narcissists that have come into my life these past few years, I knew there was something off. My gut knew there was something off, but I was so used to my modus operandi to protect myself, to be to fawn and to keep them un from, from losing their shit on me then I, I wouldn't just walk away. Like I could have in the very beginning just been like, you know what, in my head, this person is obviously a pathological liar. This person's obviously crazy. Um, I need to just, you know, whatever, you know, and then there wouldn't have been that, that much of a, a blowback because they weren't, or they weren't getting any supply from me anyway. So they would have had other victims to focus on because mm -hmm. narcissists don't have friends. They have victims. Just know that guys, they don't have friends. They have victims. Yes. Um, they don't have the capacity to understand. There's also this idea of a goodwill, you know, um, when you have a long-term friendship with someone or business ship or you've known somebody for a very long time there is what they call like a goodwill bank where over time you've built up goodwill but a rep or, uh, what's it called rapport goodwill between each other you know you've helped each other out you've gone you've gotten to a level of trust well for a narcissist that doesn't exist it doesn't matter all the things you've done for that person. It doesn't matter how much you've you've helped them out in the past. The minute you put a boundary up and say no all that's gone, right? right? All it's gone. So, so, um, and so, and then, and, and for you as the empath, you're le left there broken. Like, 
I just said no. Like, what did I do? But you have to understand you're dealing with a level of disorder. And if a narcissistic personality disorder, guys, if you're really not familiar with this, I would look because there's many different levels. Like, I, I keep hearing the word ownership in my particular case, like ownership, ownership, like I'm not my own. Yeah, you're not. No, they, they want to control. You. And that's the thing. So when you say no, when the gaslighting stops working and you say, listen, no, I don't want to work with you anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. They've now lost control of you. Right. They, they can't manipulate you anymore. You this happened to me even with uh, in my business with my store. I used to have a brick and mortar store. And whenever I would quit carrying someone's product, <laughs> I mean, as little as that, I would say, well, you know, they've gotten their product has gone on to big box stores and I was only carrying things that you couldn't get in, everywhere else. Well, then they would, I mean, like a smear campaign again, like I yeah. would stop there. She's just, I mean, she, she, she don't, she doesn't carry my jelly. She carries somebody else's jelly. It was hilarious really when you yeah. think back on it, but it really happened where people, um, lots of different little businesses would just, if I quit carrying, like they want me to order from them. And, and I would say, well, do you have a different product that you're not putting into the big box? Like, you know, in your product line, cause I could carry that, you know, oh, you know, whoo. They yeah. don't own you anymore. They don't and, own you. Uh -huh. and the best thing you can do is just ignore them because if you keep, it's what called gray rocking. If you just keep ignoring them, you get, you get boring to them all of a sudden and they will find the worst thing you can do is feed into it because it'll keep them going. Yeah. I would find myself trying to make them feel better. I would yeah. say, well, if you have something else, like if you have, oh, I was looking at your Instagram and I see you're also doing this other little thing. Is that, you know, ready to go on the store shelves yet? You know, just to try, I don't know, to keep to people, please. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's And you're trying to manage. You're trying to manage the risk because this person, I mean, narcissists are dangerous, guys. They are dangerous, very dangerous people because they have no problem with lying. Um, they have no, they don't, they have such an inflative sense of self. They, well, they don't actually have a real sense of self. That's the problem. They can't rest in themselves. Like they can't go off by themselves and just be quiet for a while. Um, they have to have a, um, you know, but they think that they are, I had one therapist explain it this way. This is like kindergarten level. And I loved it. You know, as a healthy person, you recognize that you are a special little flower. But you also see that everybody else is also a special little flower. We're all just special little flowers. For a narcissist, they are the special little flower and no one else is. How dare you, you know, have, and you have to remember, narcissists are part of the darkness, so they can't create anything. So they also will steal ideas from you. They'll steal information from you. They'll steal your hard work from you and claim it as their own because they can't. I mean, and, and the smear campaigns I've had, I've had people say that they're going to take my channel, that, that, that don't worry, guys, my channel is going to be given to them. What? <laughs> I did all the, this is my channel. Like, I did all the work on this channel just because I said no to you. Like, you know, that, that, but that's the narcissist. And so... You know, and I think more and more people, and I think there's so many people watching right now that can relate to this because so many people have been through narcissist abu abuse. And as we're seeing the great divide between fourth density negative and fourth density positive, we can go back in our lives and see where this divide is happening. Now, a lot of, let me get, let me, I don't know if I've said this, but this is my opinion. All organic portals are narcissists, but not all narcissists are organic portals. What do I mean by this? Some overt narcissist could literally be a fully sold s-u-l-e-d person who has decided to go negative okay um you can also have a low a low ranking narcissist that just someone who has just has narcissistic traits that might be a distressed sold person but a low ranking narcissist with just traits isn't going to be as vindictive as the just all full-blown a malignant narcissist, um, which is like, I think the worst is the malignant narcissist. Um, it's, it's like a sociopathic. <laughs> yeah. psychotic. Um, my, my therapist called them narcopaths. Um, the ones that were that way, they're narcopaths. They're mm -hmm. literally sociopaths, uh, psychopaths. I don't know the exact clinical definition between the two, but they kind of go up a notch in their, in their delusion. Um, they're the ones that are going to be sending you death threats. They're the ones that are going to be trying to invoke gang stalking and harassment on you mm -hmm. all because and, and the, the, the punishment does not fit the crime. The crime was you just putting up a boundary and saying no, right? 
And so they're going to try everything they can because they're so injured that you rejected them. They're so injured that they're going to try everything they can to make you pay for that. Because they're hungry. So you, you put up that boundary. You say no, you're starving them. Yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I was watching, because um, I love my reality TV. Um, I was watching the whole Vanderpump Rules, the scandal of all of it all. With Anyway, <laughs> y'all can look that up. There's It's a whole thing. But somebody made a good point, like in a narcissistic a relationship with a narcissist. Before you've put a boundary up with your narcissistic partner, they're never home. Once you put that boundary up with your narcissistic par partner, they're always home trying to control, trying to get that control back. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, it's and the problem too, is when you grow up and I know this was my issue with my ex who was a narcissist. When you grow up in an unstable home where there's a lot of a mental, emotional abuse, you see that as love. Like you learn that that's what love is. And so that's what, that's the, that's the habit I was in for my twenties and early thirties until I broke that habit by going through trauma therapy. Now, like I said, obviously I replaced the love interest with friends and business partners, but you know, which is a lesson learned for me. And I think, I think the universe for putting that clip in my uh, eye line this morning, because I was like, holy shit, holy shit. This is because of you, Darlington. The school, I'll just say the name because I don't know what the administration is like right now. I can't speak on what the school I went to is like now in 2023. I, they might have cleaned themselves up. I don't know. But when I was a child at Darlington, it was a, we were abused. And I know I'm not the only person. I mean, I started getting, back when I was on Facebook, back in like my early 30s, I started getting these Facebook messages from kids I had gone to school with. It would be like, hey, question were we abused and we would start talking about incidents that we went through mentally um one person brought up an incident i remember a teacher calling a student who had done nothing wrong all these horrific names in the middle of the class and it was so uncomfortable that the kids us in the class were not responding to the teacher we were worried about the student, yeah. and that teacher was never never reprimanded Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it, it's insane, the stuff, but it was a narcissistic system. So now, and I remember actually as a child having a moment of clarity because with private schools, especially down here in the South, old private schools like that, it's lineage. My dad went there. It's a lineage. It's generation after generation after generation. And I remember thinking as a high school student at Darlington, thinking they're doing a really bad marketing because there's no way to hell I'd send my kids here. Like I would never, and I remember saying to my parents at one point, you're paying money for us to be abused. Like there was some clarity I had that this was not normal. This was not normal. Our teachers would lie to us constantly. They would take other, other students like reports that they wrote, essays that they wrote from other classes and read them out loud and make fun of them. So as a student, you know, the same thing's happening to your papers too. Yeah. It was awful. It was horrible, horrible. Uh, my Spanish, uh, when I was 15, I was extremely sick. They didn't know. I've talked about it. It was my, my crisis moment, and it was all spiritual. But they were testing me for all sorts of stuff, like all sorts of cancers. And um, I got to the – and that, that is a good thing about private school. They could just send my work home. So I didn't – I did it from the hospital better from my house. And they were going to test me. There, there came a point where I was going to go to, like, one class a day and just rotate which class that was when I was trying to get – but they were going to do a spinal tap on me. And my parents were going every week to the school to have a meeting with my teachers and the headmaster to get my work and to figure out the next plan of action. And so my, my teachers knew that I was going to have a spinal tap on a certain day. I didn't know. My parents didn't tell me because they didn't want to freak me out. And when, when you have a spinal tap done, they numb. They, it's not as bad as it really isn't that painful, but because they numb you, they numb your whole lower body when they take the fluid out of your spine. Right. And then you have to lay there for a good couple of hours so that your spinal fluid, and they bring you stuff to drink. So your spinal fluid can build back up again. Well, I had the spinal tap done. They were testing me for some cancers and for meningitis. So it was very scary that that was scary at like 15 years old. And I missed a day of school, my parents, because I couldn't, I still had not received all my feeling back in my legs. And so my parents had called the school and said, hey, we're going to bump the rotation back a day because she's still not really feeling her legs. Normal, right? Normal reason why. 
Well, so the day I went back to school, I already was standing out because I had like umbros on and not our, our actual what we were required to wear because I had a big patch on my back. So they knew I was going to be out of dress code because so umbros from the 90s. So I was already standing out that way. They would I would get to the class early so I could set up so I would, wasn't bumped by other kids. And I was sitting there and Mr. Ortega, I'll say his name because I do believe he is in federal prison at this point for um, child abuse. Um, I, I, I was told that. And when I was told, I was like not shocked at what he did to me. So we're sitting there. It's awkward. I'm in the class with this like 30 something year old teacher. I'm 15 um, and no one's in there. We're just kind of sitting there waiting. And all of a sudden all the kids come in, class starts. And Mr. Ortega, uh, Senior Ortega, um, proceeded to berate me in front of all my classmates. Who the hell did I think I was? Because I missed the day of the Spanish test because I had a spinal tap. And did I honestly think that my health was more important than the Spanish test? How dare I? It was awful. It was demoralizing. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, at 15, I think I have, I've been told that I might have cancer at 15. Yeah. I don't even have my driver's license at this point. Like I'm a child. And so I got back in the car with my mom and I started just busting and bursting out crying. My parents were furious. They went to the school, pulled me out of that class, put me back in French. It was just awful. But that's the type of abuse yes. that was normal. That was normal abuse in the high. That was every, that was an everyday occurrence. Mm -hmm. And when that happens to you over and over and over again, you will do everything you can. And looking back with this particular teacher, all the students fawned him. They all would bring him gifts, try to keep him happy. So, yeah, my daughter is going, has been going through kind of a similar thing at her school. And I just started the process yesterday of getting her out of that school. We're going to do a charter school for her last good. year. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, and, and here's the thing when we, the narcissist thing is that when they keep like the school keeps trying to get in touch with me, you know, to that I know what's going on because my daughter and I have a great relationship. They're trying and, to gaslight you. The school yes. trying to gaslight you. So, and I, I don't respond to any of their calls. So I, I'm sure I could be made to look like a terrible mother, you know, but no, I think I'm being a very good mother and that I am talking to my, my child and trusting my child because we talk like we know each other. Um, I know what's going on. I've had to go pick her up, you know, where she's like hiding in the bathroom, afraid to go back into the class because, and because see, of that teacher. Doing, Angie, what you're doing is you're providing her with the rescue as a child. So that the patterns that you and I picked up will not be repeated with her. Yeah. She'll have healthy boundaries. Whereas, you know, another parent <laughs> is saying, uh, you know, they're elders. They're your elders. They're your elders. You're supposed to respect your elders. That, I, Not if your elders are abusing you. No, no. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, think about that. So like in your daughter's case, my case, like, so let's think about that. So obviously my teacher was, in my opinion, I'm not therapist, but was a, nar a malignant narcissist. Mm -hmm. And he perceived me because I missed the Spanish test because of my spinal tap. It didn't matter that it was a medical emergency for me, a life or death possibly issue. All it meant for him was that I was not there to take his test. Yeah. And a test is a control mechanism. So for a logically minded person, a healthy minded person, they would be absolutely cool. We can risk the test that, that a Spanish test is of your least importance right now. If you're literally fighting for your life, you know, this man had children too. Like my parent, my mother was obviously stressed out because her child was sick. Like there, and a lot of some of the good, te the, the couple of good teachers I had, had that perception. Like, how are you doing? When I would go to like my ge my um, geometry teacher, every time I'd walk in to do his class, he would sit down with me and be, how are you feeling? How are you doing? Yeah. Don't do the homework if it's too much. Um, you know, we had rules about going to the bathroom, but he would tell me like, you know, if you got to get up and go to the bathroom or you need to walk out for a minute, you just go. It's total, I understand. Mm -hmm. So there, so you could see the adults that had an, a, a logically healthy mind that this child was sick. And they don't know what's wrong with her. And she could be fighting for her life versus a narcissist 
where the life of the child or the person doesn't matter, doesn't matter at all to them because it's all about them and their narc supply. Unfortunately, I do think narcissism is probably rampant in teachers of children. I know they're really good teachers out there. I'm not, I'm not generalizing and saying, obviously, they're, my, my mother was a teacher. She was a great teacher. But I could see how that career would be enticing to a narcissist because you've got all these, like, especially teenagers stuck in a room and they can't go anywhere. You, you have full control. You know what I'm thinking? There's always this thing we talk about where the, the children coming into the world now, they're, they're, you know, they're already way higher up than we are ascended yeah. um so i'm looking back on my high school years i had three really amazing teachers i still keep up with them to this day i still remember particular conversations we had i remember the way their eyes looked into my eyes you know like they were they were edifying for me and and i think about them now and i'm like but they're all like the same age too <laughs> they were all older then um, whereas I don't know, I wonder if there's something to do with that, the age thing, the, yeah, the I will, in my case with my teachers, because it was a private school, we had a lot of teachers in high school that were like, if I was like, when I was 17, I had one teacher who was 22. Yeah. They're so just a little bit. Different. Yeah. Like my, my boyfriend is 11 years older than me. He's older than some of my teachers were in school. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them were in kind of like a gap year between university and like law school or med school, you know, so they weren't, that wasn't their career choice. And because my school was a boarding school and a day school, a lot of the um, faculty could live on campus free of charge. Like they had dormitory apartments for teachers. They had ha faculty housing. And I did notice that too, you're right. The older teachers were usually the ones that were, they, they were like the career teachers that wanted to teach. You know, everybody always complains about middle school. I loved middle school because Mr. Van Ness, who was our, our principal of our middle school at Darlington was amazing. Like he was such an incredible, as people still love Mr. Van Ness. And that school, Darlington did him dirty in his final years. They talk about narcissistic abuse. And there was a whole, like, we got we got a whole support page up for him. Because as an adult, from our, him being our, because we, everybody loved him so much. And um, and that's why I think I had such an incredible three, our middle school was sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. I remember it thoroughly. I loved middle school. Those were the, the happiest years of my life was middle school. Because my cause school was fun, school mm -hmm. was fun. All of my teachers were older people, and so they were con they were actual teachers. They were, there. but high school, no high school. I have I have missing memories. I, I there's some memories I have missing from high school. That's how traumatic it was. This is even making me think about the pre. I used to work in a preschool. <laughs> I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> and I. I know I worked with the different teachers. I was, I was just a substitute. So I would come and be the aide with all these different teachers. And um, even in preschool, now I'm when I say preschool, this is a church preschool. It's like age two, three, and four, like babies, little babies. Even there, the older teachers that had been there forever were so sweet and kind and were really good. At, so whenever the little children would have conflicts, you know, I remember one teacher, Miss Camersham, she was so amazing. She would just say, oh, my goodness. Like if a, if a child came and tattletailed, yeah. she had a little paper bag and she'd say, oh, tell it inside the bag. And then we'll we'll close up the bag and then we'll we'll. That's you know, <laughs> awesome. And she would do things like that. She'd also do things like, oh, friend, like if there was a little child being, you know, disruptive or whatever, she'd say, come here, friend, and give that child a hug. And she goes, oh, I just think you need a hug. You need a hug. And that child, I watched it day after day working with her. That child would just, just, you know, something would click. And... They were getting that love. And so she yeah. was probably curing some issues before issues even had a chance yes. to start. Amazing. I worked with a teacher, Mrs. Marks, Miss Shirley Marks. It was her last year teaching. And I got to work with her that whole year. She was actually my husband's kindergarten teacher. That's how long she had been at that school. And I got to work with her her last year when her retirement. And it was the same then. I mean, she was just so wise, so much wisdom there. And the younger teachers I worked with were, 
Yeah. Just awful. And I got to see the difference because I traveled, you know, to all the different classes, but uh, with all these different teachers and <laughs> it's pretty funny. Well, but, it's interesting. Mr. Fox did an episode with uh, Aquarius Rising Africa yesterday. I'll put it down in the description box below where they, where, where they were still continuing. I'll put all our past episodes and organic portals down below too, guys, if you missed it. But um, um, they talked about narcissism now is very rampant. And I think it's because we're getting ready to split. So people are showing their choices, basically. But Mr. Fox said something that also our society right now enables narcissism. It enables it. You know, it promotes it. Mm -hmm. And um, I know I've got to hop off soon because I actually have to hop on with Shanti as well. But I was going to say, you guys, like what Angie, like as somebody yourself, I've gone through narcissistic ab abuse. You've been through narcissistic abuse. It is one of the worst things you can go through it will bring you to the points of complete de devastation. You'll be trying to figure out why it's even going on because you didn't do anything. Um, and so, Angie, what would you be your biggest advice to somebody going through this right now as a friend? We're not therapists. We're not, I mean, go to a therapist for sure. But, we're not <laughs> but as a friend, if, if somebody's watching right now, one of our friends are watching right now and they're going through this, what, what would you be your biggest advice to these people? What would you say well, to just them? to have listened at least to the part about when you say no, when you take that, that take your power story, back, take your power back. Um, Cause I'm, I'm in it, you know, in, in many ways in my life, um, just saying, no, I used to, I used to conform and just go along with groups and just kind of keeping the peace and, Oh, I'm supposed to do this and that and the other, because I am, you know, living in this town and this is the way things are and I'm married into this family and this is what they do. And then this is what this club that I'm in does. And, um, well, all the other, all the other wives are this way. So, okay, well, I'll be that way. Um, I, um, there's I watch videos, honestly, watch videos because oh, I will, yeah. I will find myself going back into that loop of, doing the people pleasing again. Um, and so it's really good to just have those reminders. Like you said, when you woke up this morning and that till swan short played for you and you needed that and it struck up all this. Well, for me, it's like sometimes just to have that reminder of, uh, you know, I mean, sometimes I just have to go on and say, <laughs> Oh, yeah, you can type oh. in narcissistic rage, narcissistic smear campaign, um, <laughs> narcissistic pathological lying. Um, and yeah. it's not going to make sense. I I, I love, I'm just the other day I thought about this. Like, um, It's like whenever I would take my kids to Target, you know, and we'd be in that checkout line. And my little boy would want Pokemon cards, which, you know, I'm like, those are so stupid. And I wouldn't let him get them or just whatever it was, a piece of candy or whatever. <laughs> and, or I was actually pretty good. I mean, my kids really didn't pitch a whole lot of tantrums. They just knew better. But, um, you know, you, you'd see it a lot in the lines, like people either giving in or I just heard the other day, I just heard a woman the other day, what were you doing? We were getting Rosie's license and we're in like the, the DDS in Greensboro, Georgia. And there's a mom there like just chewing out her kids, just you know, she's like, I'm going to spank you when we get out in the car. If you don't stop it, if you don't stop. And they're just like screaming and hollering at each other in front of everybody and, you know, pulling on her, on her son down the hall. And, we're, and Rosie and I are like, oh, my God, <laughs> like there is a way to do it, you yeah. know, but so that the fits that these narcissists do are just like a kid and a temper tantrum, kicking, kicking and screaming on the floor, not making any sense because you've you've told them no, you've told them no. So I don't know. I kind of went on a little rant there, but no, but um, it is. It's a temper tantrum. Yeah. It's a temper from, tantrum. from an adult. And it's not going to make any sense. No, it's not. It doesn't always make sense. It's not, um, you know, so and we, try to, we try to make it make sense. Like, what did I do? What yeah. can I do to, to fix it? Um, to make them stop <laughs> teaching this fit. Nothing. You can't do anything. Mm -mm. Yeah. And it's going to happen, you guys. Like, there's no place dating. You can't. Yeah. All you did was say no. And you have a right to say no. You have a right to to have your own boundaries. You're not a martyr. You can't save anyone anyway. You can only save yourself. You. It's going to come. It's going to happen. You know, as people have said to me, this is, and this is an opportunity for you to get to see who your real friends are. People who believe the narcissist, especially when it's freaking crazy, 
they're not here for your highest good anyway. And if they can't see it for what it is, then good mm -hmm. luck to them in life, you know, because they're going to probably be the next victim of someone like this. And there is help out there. Um, I know that narcissistic abuse can make you feel very suicidal. I get it. I trust me. I, I totally get it. Um, don't hurt yourself. Mm -hmm. That's what the narcissist wants you to do. They want, I mean, that's the, uh, that's the whole point of an organic portal is they want you to die. Right. So, so um, please reach out for help. There are lots of support groups out there of narcissistic abuse. Um, narcissistic abuse will, can change your brain chemistry. Um, mm -hmm. As I've gotten older, I've noticed that I have a lot of ADHD personality types and I would have never thought of myself as someone with ADHD. And then I saw a, another video where narcissistic abuse physically changes your brain chemistry when you've been when you've been under so much abuse that you can start showing signs of ADHD as an adult because ADHD is kind of like an anxiety disorder anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so that's how that's how traumatic this is. Um, please get the help. Know that you are very loved. Please know that the people who love you want you here and know that this whatever the narcissist is doing to you isn't true the truth stand in your truth the truth always comes out karma is a bitch and i will say and i know it's hard i know it's really scary to go to law enforcement i know that because you're terrified of the narcissist anyway but if they are threatening your safety law enforcement have been amazing with me they have really helped me and they will say they, they are used to this. They know what this is and they take death threats very easily, be very, um, very seriously because they've, the bad ones go there, the malignant ones go there. And so they, um, game, gang stalking, it's crime. It's, this is federal. What they're doing. If you're within a situation where you've gotten to that point where the narcissist got to that point, this is federal crime. And so you as the victim have every right to seek your own protection. And so please do. I know it's scary. And the, the officers of law enforcement know you're scared. They know you're scared. Mm -hmm. And they're going to handle that. You can, If you're a female, you can request to speak to another female officer. You know, you, 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 you just please protect yourself and know that you are worth protecting. And you're welcome to reach out to me if you... Or I'm sure Angie too. If you're in a situation where you just need a, a shoulder to lean on, um, that's why that's why I started my channel. You know, you are loved, and we're moving into a world where hopeful. Well, I know in fourth density positive, this shit's not going to exist. It can't exist because there's no line in fourth density positive. And narcissists, narcissists are well. They think they're good liars. <laughs> Some of them are not smart enough to be good liars because some of them put really bodacious lies out there that can be easily proven false. So, you know, so, but just ignore them, guys. Don't feed into it. Don't respond to it. I'm like you, Angie. I block. Mm -hmm. The last situation, I blocked right away. I just blocked. Yeah. Let them talk to themselves. Let them have arguments with themselves. You did nothing wrong. You just said no. Right. So. All right, so we're going to be filming with our friend Eric soon to go over the bite model, which again is a huge, we talked about it a lot on my channel before. We're going to talk about it again because this narcissistic abuse is rampant in the truther community. This cruelty makes me not even want to be a part of this community because the, not, not our community on Esoteric Atlanta. Let me rephrase that. Everybody on this channel is amazing. But like just the greater community as a whole with all the abuse that's going on, you know, the, the not people who don't conform to the narrative of the future faking that these narcissistic platform mm -hmm. owners give you that future fake and if you don't conform to it if you say no i don't think that's accurate then you're the bad guy that's abuse so they so have them chasing a carrot that's what they have them. it's called future there's an actual clinical term for it it's called future faking if you are a part of the truth or movement you've never heard of this before knowledge is power knowledge protects knowledge is infinite that's your homework today research narcissistic abuse future faking very informative and go oh shit we've all been deceived so not saying that there isn't a beautiful future ahead of us we just don't know what that looks like because we don't know what that looks like we haven't been privy to to what what's going to happen we just know that it's coming so um so just rest in that faith and live how many people have like gone bankrupt because they're waiting for nasara mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's not coming yet i don't know if it's even coming i have no idea how that's going to work 
Just but keep taking care of yourself, you guys. So anyway, I got to hop off because I got to go to Aquarius Rising Africa. So I think this video is going to be airing after I do my show with Aquarius Rising Africa. But I love you, Angie. I love you. And we're all walking each other home. We'll all get through this. We'll continue this conversation. If there's an aspect of narcissistic abuse that you want us to cover on a show, leave it down in the comment section below. I am looking to get a therapist on the show to also do a really deep dive into nar what narcissism is, narcissistic abuse. Um, I don't want to use my therapist because I feel like that's a conflict of interest. Um, so I'm looking for another therapist. If you know a good therapist that wants to come on the show, let me know. I have reached out to the big therapist on YouTube. Funnily enough, haven't heard back, but they have like millions of followers. So <laughs> um, didn't really expect to hear back. Um, but if you have a therapist that you know would want to come on the show and talk about the clinical, what, what this is clinically, then just let me know, guys. Anyway, all Angie's links will be down in the description box below as well. And we will talk to you soon. Bye, everybody.